Today I want to touch on a topic, um, the Christian in politics. Uh, this is a time in my life, I can't remember more division in this country, in the United States. Um, and all over the world, I think. It's not just unique to the United States, but um, a lot of times I hear Christians aligning themselves with one political party. Or saying, if you don't vote for this candidate or this person, um, are you even Christian? And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think if you look um, in the life of Jesus, and we will today, uh, politics was not a big part of his ministry. Now, he could have had a lot of opportunities to talk about politics, and he did not. He actually specifically, and we'll see examples here, he didn't take the bait when he was asked to talk about politics. And I've heard otherwise. I've heard that, you know, the bringing in of the kingdom was political. Um, and I don't believe that it was. I believe he, Jesus was very clear that his kingdom was not of this world. And it really had nothing to do with the politics of the day. Uh, but it had more to do with the kingdom of heaven. So we're going to touch on some things today. Um, I want to cover this. I want to give um, believers out there the confidence to know uh, that you don't need to get tied up in the politics of this world. Uh, you can stand for what's right. You can stand for what's truthful. But ultimately, you need to stand on God's word. That's the most important thing. Um, so turn in your Bible to the book of John, uh, chapter 18. We're going to start there. And we're going to start really with the idea of why did Jesus come? Did he come with a political message? Um, did he come to overthrow Rome? Uh, that's actually what the Jews expected in Israel for the Messiah to do. They expected a ruler to rightly take the throne in Israel. Uh, to, to kind of kick Roman rulers out and to become the king. And what they neglected was that he was a different kind of king, which he was the king of kings, which meant he wasn't there necessarily for an earthly reason, uh, but he was there for a heavenly reason. So we look in John 18 and 36, and Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered from the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Uh, verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I'm king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into this world. What cause? The cross. That's, that was the whole reason he came. That I should bear witness to the truth, and everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So he had the opportunity there to essentially fight which is what he was saying, but he chose not to. He chose to, came to, to fulfill the purpose which he came to the world for, which was to die on the cross. So we see Jesus specifically getting asked by Pilate in a way where he could have gotten political and he could have said, you know, you're not, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be ruling over Israel. This isn't what, um, you know, you're, they're not your people. Uh, but he didn't. He didn't take that opportunity. He took the opportunity to actually preach the kingdom of God and say he came here for the truth and he really came here to go to the cross. And that's what I want believers to take away is that um, the kingdom is not of this world. This world is passing away. You need to understand that uh, this world is not going to be here forever. And if you are tied to this world and all its things and all the earthly cares and all the earthly goods, um, you are not storing up for yourself treasure in heaven. And if your mind is constantly taken with what's going on politically in this world, uh, it's really going to take your mind off the Word of God. You know, I've seen that um, even personally. You know, it's, just, it's so easy to get wrapped up. And I understand when you do. It's so easy to get wrapped up in political things. Uh, but the more you focus on the Word of God, the better off you'll be um, in the, to do work for God. Otherwise, your eyes are just going to be on the things of this world, uh, which they shouldn't be. All right, so Jesus came to die. Right, I think that's pretty clear. He came to um, bring God's kingdom to this earth. And what does he mean by that? Well, when he died on the cross, he allowed people to enter in relationship with God. Um, you know, humans who are on this earth. And now they can. Um, now they can essentially function as the church and allow, uh, preach the gospel to every creature and allow other people to come in and allow other people to be saved. That's why he came. He came uh, to die to allow man to be in relationship with God. So what did he say about earthly rule? So obviously he was on this earth, but he wasn't of this earth. 
Um, but what did he say about it? What did he say about being here, trying to coexist, right? Because I think that's the difficulty that most Christians come into is they are in this world, but not of this world. What does that mean? Well, they're physically here. You and I are physically here, but we're not of this world system, right? We're not of the things in this world that are passing away. So I think the best um, example is when Jesus is asked about uh, paying taxes to Caesar. So if you go to Matthew 22... This was another place that Jesus could have been trapped in a political discussion, but was not. Chose not to be. All right. I mean, I, you might want to take that as an example. So 22 and um, verse 17. So these the Pharisees were trying to catch him. They were trying to trap him. And that's what a lot of people do to Christians do about certain topics, certain issues. Um, what do you feel about this? What do you feel about that? Um, trying to trap him. Trying to trap him to be against something or come off as hateful. When all you need to do is point the truth out. If you keep just pointing to the truth, you'll, you'll do a heck of a lot better than trying to refute everything that the world is throwing at you. And that's what Jesus did. So, uh, verse 15, we'll go 22 and 15, Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. So they were trying to trap him. And they said to him, their disciples, with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth, nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. So we're trying to flatter him here, right? Um, and God is no uh, respecter of persons. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Because um, So if he said yes, they were trying to trap him. Like, okay, well, you know, this man is not of God. This, he's just an earthly person like anybody else who's, you know, obeying Caesar. Where if he said no, then they could try to trap him for overthrowing uh, Roman rule. Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? So they didn't care. They were just trying to trap him. They didn't really care about the answer. Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, Whose image inscription is this? And they said to him, It's Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. So, um, there's not much that Jesus says about earthly rule, uh, but this, he, he specifically refused a political debate here, did not um, get into it with them. And basically said, who made the coin? Who's on the coin? Well, I'll give it to him then. Right? And it, it didn't mean necessarily, like all things come from God. All provision comes from God. All money comes from God. Uh, but, you know, this was a coin that had somebody's face on it. And it was kind of meaningless in his eyes. So he said, give it to him. Right? So uh, he wasn't trying to get trapped in the idea of you know, where this money should go. Uh, but more so, he was... Uh, just likening it to an earthly good um, that could go back to Caesar. You know, he knew and he had already shown the disciples that he would provide for them. Uh, and it's, you know, throughout the word of God where he provides the, uh, the coin in the mouth of the fish, he provides the bread and fishes. So we know already that provision uh, comes from God. So this specifically here um, was to, you know, mainly avoid any political debate, but then also say, yeah, I mean, if you're living in a land, right, and there's taxes due, pay the taxes, okay? Um, you know, we see that even in Romans 13, like there's a kind of a, a in-depth explanation that Paul gives uh, about like earthly governments and how we're supposed to react with earthly governments. Um, Romans 13 and 1 through 7 let every soul be subject to the governing authority. So this is pretty much tying into like, you know, more explanation on what Jesus says of, you know, render to Caesar what's Caesar's. Uh, for there's no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So essentially God in one way, shape, or form has allowed these people to come to power for whatever reason, whether it's to punish people, which we saw in the Old Testament, and we probably are still seeing today, um, or uh, to rule over them and uh, keep order. It doesn't mean they're godly, and it doesn't mean that they serve God, but they are keeping some sort of order. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. 
Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Well, do what's good, and you'll have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on those who practice evil. So that's the idea of crime and punishment. If you think about you know, the laws in the United States, you might disagree with some of them, but I think the majority of them are there to protect people. You see, you know, there's, you know, thou shalt not kill in the Bible, and, you know, murder is illegal. If you murder somebody, you can be executed in this country. So, uh, basically, you know, what Paul's saying there is that, uh, you know, obey the laws uh, that, that are there, because um, they're coming from God, and most importantly, uh, obey God. Because in Acts 5, right, we see that, the most important thing, uh, really, is is to obey God in all of this. So, Acts 5 and, and 29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So, that's when they were on trial. And, uh, you know, they got in trouble for healing. But, uh, really, what they're, they're saying here, when there's a conflict, when there's an issue between man, what man's saying and what God's saying, obey God. Um, but pray for our leaders. You know, we're not here to um, call condemnation down on anybody. We're here to pray for anybody in the unsaved world. Uh, and in 1 Timothy, you go to 1 Timothy 2 and 1. Therefore I exalt, Paul says to Timothy, therefore I exhort First of all, that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and those who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So, you know, pray for them. Pray for people in power. Pray for anybody who's not saved. Pray for people who have a lot on their plate. There might be uh, leaders, politicians that you don't agree with right now. Pray for them. Try to pray for them to get saved. Pray for them to, to see uh, what God's will is um, in this world to lead. Uh, but politics is really the world system. The gospel is the cure. People are wondering, well, we have this, this problem in our, in our world. We have this division in our world. What's the answer? The answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It always has been and it always will be. So don't try to think of any other method or any other uh, thing that can help mankind. Uh, because ultimately that's what it all boils down to. Anything else without the gospel is meaningless. Uh, and our commission is to spread the good news, not to quabble over political issues. Don't waste your time on this earth quabbling over politics. Um, spend your time on this earth spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that is profitable and that will bear fruit. Uh, thank you. I hope this blessed you today, and I hope it uh, gave you some kind of perspective as to where you should be spending your time and effort as a Christian.